Hey guys, this is Doug with FellowshipOfTheMartyrs.com. I'm a little casual today. It's kind of a work day, and um, I'm wearing my sh shirt with the paint on it and everything. And we are, excuse me, <coughs> get adjusted here. We are um, here at the office in Liberty at the food pantry, and I'm doing some cleaning on the computer, getting uh, some of the books ready for Amazon, and, and just basically organizing, um, doing some external hard drive backups and stuff like that and I came across some writings that I had completely forgotten that I did way back a long time ago this is from 2006 actually and it's just a little one page thing I'm just gonna read it to you um, because uh, it, it's kinda fun and uh, kinda tongue-in-cheek and kinda serious at the same time you know how I am um, this is called fill in the Jesus blanks and uh, it, it, it kind of works like this. You take a verse of the Bible, and then and then you put a and blank, and you add in whatever you want. Okay? And then you see if it makes any sense. Okay? So, it's like this. Um, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, and believes that the rapture is pre-tribulational, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. You see how I did that? Um... Uh, how about these? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and is a member of the correct denomination, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Uh, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and is not a member of one of the incorrect denominations, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. That's a little more accepting. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and insists on only using the authorized 1611 King James, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Isn't this fun? Um, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and has a perfect understanding of the Trinity, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Uh, not, not sure I can get comfy with any of those. Uh, let's, let's, let's try some more. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and help pay for the new chandelier in the sanctuary, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and is sure that I don't do signs and miracles anymore, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Uh, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and is clear that I don't talk to people anymore since the Bible was completed, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Yeah, that last one's really screwy. Um, how do we hear his voice to know he's there if we don't think he speaks anymore? I mean, how do we hear the door getting knocked on? Uh, that's a problem. I wouldn't want to be a pastor preaching that one. So, uh, try it yourself. Um, you just plug anything in there and see if it still sounds like Jesus, okay? So it's like, uh, you know, uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and blank, then I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Uh, uh, um, I, guess it's, I, I guess it's possible that all you have to do is, op is answer the door when he knocks, but, but that's just too simple. Uh, there has to be more to it than that, right? I mean, that's the point of all our books and seminaries and denominations, right? That there has to be more to it than just answering the door when he knocks. How could that alone be sufficient to get you saved when there's all these other things that need to be considered? So here, here's another verse, for example. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him and was a five-point Calvinist would be saved. See, I mean, I know that you're going to have a hard time finding the, the, the translation that actually says that, but that's what people mean when they say it. So, okay, here, here's some more. This is fun. You know, go, go find your own verses and have a game with your friends. If you abide in me, then I will abide in you, so long as you never speak in tongues. If you abide in me, I will abide in you, unless you use drums, you use drums and overhead projectors in your church. If you abide in me, then I will abide in you, unless you're in a building that has a 501c3 corporate status. Uh, and, 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 oh, here's a good one. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son, and a proper technique of administering communion at the right times, has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Uh, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, and were quick to find error in another brother, he gave the right to become children of God. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
don't worry about that verse in Revelation about not adding anything to the Bible. He was probably just kidding about that. You know, feel free to doctor it up however you want and tell everyone that Jesus told you to do it. I'm sure that he won't mind. It's fine. Just pick a verse and stick an and in there and then fill in the blank with whatever whatever suits you. And, you know, and then teach it to all your kids and, and everybody in your little building. And, and don't worry about, you know, uh, uh, that that verse in Revelation about not adding things. Just something to think about. Just a little one pager. I'll uh, get it loaded up on the website one of these days and get a link to you. Uh, but yeah, that's all. Thanks for listening.